Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we come today to celebrate the Eucharist, we remember our sins, but above all, we remember God's mercy. And so we have the courage to ask God for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, God, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my, my thoughts and in my words. words in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down, and the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am. For you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy, and Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood forth, calling at, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks, be, Thanks to, be God. to God. The response, See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. I waited. 
I waited for the Lord and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth. Praise of our God. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. You delight not in sacrifice and offerings, but in an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Then I said, See, I have come. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your instruction lies deep within me. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed to know it, O Lord. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, the body is not meant for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ, but he who is united to the Lord, becomes one spirit with him. Shun immorality. Every other sin which a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own. You were brought with a price. So glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 We have found the Messiah who is Christ. Grace and truth came through him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following, and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. About 70 years ago, a young United States English scholar turned expert on myth, legend, and comparative religion, Joseph Campbell, observed a common pattern in the secular and religious literatures of almost every culture. According to Campbell, most great myths and legends that are centered on an individual follow a common pattern he calls the hero's journey. It begins with the central character either leaving home or being drawn away to pursue some kind of quest, the call to adventure. 
either accompanied by, often recruited by, a helper or mentor, she or he undergoes a series of tests, often conflicts or personal struggles, as the familiarity of home is replaced with a new, uncertain, often dangerous space. As the hero proceeds, tests and other setbacks continue to occur with or without the companions. The hero, however, presses on until tasks are overcome. The goal, whether the original one or another that turns out to be the real purpose of the adventure, is attained. Fears are faced and overcome. Wisdom is gained. The hero then makes the return journey, older and wiser. The hero is transformed, having moved from naivety to maturity and can then often serve as the mentor and initiator of a new would-be hero, or go forth again on a new adventure. Popular culture is littered with examples of the hero's journey. To take but one, consider the Star Wars films, which is not surprising, by the way, since writer-director George Lucas actually consulted with Joseph Campbell before he wrote the series. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the film, films and want to, spoiler alert, from this point on, cover your ears until you see me wave. I'll wave. At least two of the three trilogies follow the classical pattern. The prequel trilogy, How Anakin Skywalker Became Darth Vader, is a tragic journey into evil, a kind of anti-hero's journey. In my favorite trilogy, we see the quest echoing in the lives of the three protagonists. Luke Skywalker's quest is not simply to become a Jedi Knight. It is, in fact, to redeem his father. For Han Solo, it is to move beyond cynical self-interest and survivalism and become committed to something other than himself, the rebellion against the Empire, and ultimately to another person. For Leah, the revolutionary, it is to become an even greater leader by learning to love. Okay, you can uncover your ears. Looking at our first reading in Gospel today, I was struck how similar the stories of Samuel and the disciples of Jesus look to the beginning of heroes' journeys. In both case, cases, they move outside their places of normality into new spaces, following God's call. The young apprentice in the temple, Samuel, under the tutelage of Eli, hears the voice of God and mistakes it for Eli. The latter, as any good companion or mentor of the budding young hero does, has the wisdom to realize that the boy is not mad nor simply dreaming. He tells him to respond to the call, which Eli understands is of God, and to take him up to take up what is God's call to adventure. The rest, as they say, is history. After a long and often complicated path, Samuel assumes the mantle of prophethood. Now in the Gospel, the story is slightly different. John the prophet sees Jesus for who he is. He releases his disciples. His mentorship is over. For them to grow, to embark, on their adventure of faith, they must leave him and follow Jesus. Jesus becomes their mentor with, what are you looking for? And come and see. Jesus invites them on the hero's journey. And in the process, a process not unlike countless quest stories, they pull in another companion, another hero, Simon. And Jesus does what often happens in such tales. He gives Simon a new name, Cephas or Peter. A new name for a hero embarking on a quest has always significance. The name is often foreshadowing, a prediction of what the hero will achieve or the task he or she must perform. Now, what has any of this to do with us today? Apart, of course, for an opportunity for a science fiction nerd to bring Star Wars into a homily. 
quite a lot, I think. If I'm right in seeing our readings as examples of the hero's journey, we must ask, what journey? The journey of faith. And in particular, the journey of what Jesuit spiritual director Herbert Alfonso calls the personal vocation. Samuel in the Hebrew Bible, Simon now called Cephas and the others in the New Testament, are all called to embark on discipleship, to take the risks, to face the challenges, to complete the heroic journey. By extension, we are called too. Now, I am not saying this just, just to encourage everyone to run off to the nearest monasteries or convents, to come knocking on the doors of religious houses, seeking admission to orders, or even to start pestering your local bishop to admit you to the priesthood or diaconate. Although, I suspect, however, that many of you may find it if you try, that depending on circumstances, you may not be chased away. For some, the personal vocation, the adventure of faith, may take you in this or similar directions. For others, probably not. The journey may be towards inner renewal, deeper faith, expressed in prayer and works that you can apply in your life. It may be a calling to a new kind of work, perhaps even a ministry rooted in your local community or a deeper, more faith-rooted embrace of what you're already doing. Follow the pattern. Listen to that invitation to adventure. Find companions. Find a mentor to guide you through the rough patches and have your back as you go on your particular quest. There will be rough patches, opposition. There will be doubts, even mishearings along the way as Samuel experiences. You may not change your name or have it changed like Peter, but you will be changed. Whichever way it pans out, it will be a hero's journey. Let us then affirm our faith in our faith journey by professing the faith we share with all Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before the ages, God from, from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. But by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again from the dead in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions this day. As Samuel, Peter, and the other disciples heard God's call to them, may all Christians be open to the divine call to them. Be that call to marriage, single life, lay ministry, public witness, and at work, priesthood, diaconate, or the life of a vowed religious. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us embarked on our personal vocations, may we be strengthened in difficult times by wise mentors, the support of good companions, and nourished always by the loving presence of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who minister in the church, and for all who serve in public life, particularly in positions of leadership, may they always seek their hero's journey as one rooted in service over self-interest, compassion over coercion, and justice rooted in mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. For your own personal prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. Loving God, as we listen to your call, hear the calls we make today, the calls we make out loud, the calls that we make to you from the depths of our heart. We make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And this mingling of water and of wine may we come to share in the divinity of him who shared our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people, Israel, through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love 
And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat, eat this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, cup we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, until you come again. again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having, been call, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Booty our Archbishop, Duncan his Auxiliary, with all priests, bishops, deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your way with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior commanded, so let us pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
we take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.